Hello, I'm Dr. Ashok Tansari and I'm a neuropsychologist. What that means is that I study how the brain works and I do that by studying healthy adults, adults with brain damage, kids during development, kids with brain damage, people who take drugs and even people with neuropsychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. And what we're trying to work out is how does the brain work, what makes it function, and how does it allow us to do all those clever things that we do every day. So today, what I'm going to do is to look at some Google searches of um, things that people tend to look for. So, there you go. So when I go into Google and I type in, how does the brain, one of the questions that comes up is, how does the brain work? So how does the brain work? Well, it's very complicated because the brain is made up of millions of things called nerve cells. And nerve cells are like little electrical cables that send messages from one part of the brain to the other. And those nerve cells process information that's coming from the outside or from the inside and send it around the brain to allow you to do things. So for example, from your eyes, there are nerve cells at the back that go to the back of your head here, which is the visual areas. And then there are cells from there that start looking at that information to look at things like edges, the color, movement, and things like that. And it processes that information in a way that we don't quite understand yet. And it sends it forward through the brain so that we can start understanding what we're looking at. So effectively, the way the brain works is by this colossal number of nerve cells with these tiny little electrical wires that are taking different types of information and moving it around the brain. They allow us to see, to speak, to hear, to feel when we touch things, to taste, and then even to think and to plan what we're going to do tomorrow. So that's how generally the brain works. Okay, the next question. How does the brain store memories? How does the brain store memories? Well, that's a $64,000 question or probably even more than that because we're still working it out. But generally speaking, what the brain does is it takes in the information that you're experiencing right now. So right now you're hearing my voice, you're seeing something, you might be eating something, you might be drinking something, you might be, even be smelling something. It takes all of those sensory bits of information, so the things that are, your five senses are bringing in, and it puts it together into a packet along with what you're thinking about. So you might have already have some ideas about the brain and you put all of these things together and you create a packet and that packet is what this particular moment is about. And that is stored somehow. And then later on, when you try to remember what you did, the brain tries to find that information. So when you think about your last birthday party, what the brain does is it does this big search through there, tries to find the information about what could I see, what could I hear, how did I feel, uh, who was a uh, weird, etc., etc., and then it replays that information like a little movie in your in your eye, and it creates a sense of oh, I remember what I did on my last birthday. So the brain basically stores memories by taking in all of the information it can currently experience, plus information that's coming from inside about how you're feeling, what you're thinking about, what you're wanting. And it creates some sort of package and it stores that package for you to later find it when you're searching for that memory. So let's see our next question. How does the brain develop? So the brain is incredibly complicated and one of the things that I I say is that we know more about the dark side of the moon than we know about our brain and that's because of how complicated it is. But basically the brain uh, starts from a very simple structure 
in the middle of um, the head of the baby and that structure simply allows the baby to feel things because to feel things is most important and over time first of all in the mother's womb and then after the baby is born different structures start developing and those structures are for allowing you to see to hear etc etc now because the baby's brain is only quite small what needs to happen for it to grow to uh, uh, adult size is that some growth is needed now that growth is very very complicated and as i said we're still only working that out but one of the things that happens during maturity as we develop from childhood into adolescence and then early adulthood is that those um, uh, wires that I talked about earlier, those nerves, they start getting more efficient. The way they start getting more efficient is that through a biological process, a layer of fat goes around each of those uh, nerve cells. And the reason that that's important is that it insulates that nerve cell and it helps it to keep its information better. And that process is called myelination. So, and myelin is the fatty deposit around the nerve cell. And the way to think about it is that if you have a, a hot water pipe that is moving water from here to here, if the hot water pipe is very thin, then what will happen is that the heat of the hot water will escape through the, uh, the walls of the pipe very easily. So as the water is going from here to here, it's going to lose heat because it's, it's being lost from those walls. So what we do with hot water pipes is we clad them. So we put insulation around them and that insulation keeps the heat in. And in a way, that's what's happening with electrical impulses within the brain. By putting that myelin sheath around the, brain, the nerve cells, we're helping that electrical signal to be maintained. And we know that this process of myelination happens during childhood, and it's happening in different parts of the brain at different speeds. So for example, the back of the brain gets myelinated, so developed quite quickly, whereas the front of the brain, we think isn't fully developed until the early 20s or maybe in the mid 20s, because it takes that long for the process to be fully completed. What is our next question? How does the brain send messages to the body? So the way the brain sends messages to the rest of the body is through those electrical cables, the nerves, and we've got nerves that are sending information around the brain to process information for what you remember, what you're thinking, etc. But at the same time, it's also talking to the rest of the body. So, for example, this arm is controlled by my muscles and those muscles need to do something to allow me to lift something or to hold my friend here. Now, to do that and move these fingers, lift my elbow, etc., these muscles need a message. And that message comes from here. And there's an area of the brain called the motor strip, which is kind of like an Alice band that goes across the side of the head. Now, on my friend, you know, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, it would go kind of ear to ear. And that Alice band it sends information so that this part of the brain, the left side, controls the right side of our body. So messages go from these nerve cells here, down the spinal cord and along our nerves to the um, muscles and skeleton to allow us to do that. And similarly, messages will be sent from here to my right leg from the left, the right side of my brain to my left arm etc similarly messages go from the brain to our heart to our kidneys to all these different areas to allow them to function 
So basically, the fundamental basis of the way the brain works is these little electrical cables called nerve cells, and they send information around the brain to allow us to process information up here, as well as that, to communicate information to the rest of the body. And the rest of the body sends information back. So when I touch something, there are little pressure pads in here. And those pressure pads are feeling information. And then through our nerves, those are taking information back up here, up the spinal cord, back into the brain, and it's felt within the brain. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed what my friend here and I have been telling you about the brain. I hope you found it useful. What I'd like you to do is to like this video, also post any comments or questions that you have into um, the comment section with this video, and I will try to answer those. So please look back in and please subscribe to the, the channel and tell other people about it because what I'd like to do is to answer more and more questions about the brain and I'll be producing more content for you as time goes on. So for myself and my friend here, goodbye and see you next time. Bye.